either should vote on it on a, every issue or completely abstain from the debate unless he wants to come out of the chair because myself a chair is supposed to be totally impartial right that the intent so if he doesn't vote, then that chair shouldn't have make comments pro or con on an issue because that sways debate. And it's actually participation in the debate. So the intent is that the chair remain totally unbiased. Is that correct? That is correct as well. The chair provides the chair an opportunity um, to break a tie vote or to break whatever vote is going on, to sway it one way or another. Naturally, the chair's position is to remain impartial, and that's the reason why we added it there. But it is part of parliamentary procedures under Robert's rules. I understand that, and that's, I don't have a problem, but I, I hope it doesn't come back and haunt you that uh, we get uh, somebody requesting uh, <laughs> recorded votes at all times. And, uh, one more. Yes, on page 63, when it talks about uh, either 63 or 64, it talks about an appointment to a vacancy in the position of mayor. Uh, if if uh, A, it talks about filling the vacancy by appointing a person who has consented to accept the office if appointed. Now, I'm just confused because how do you how do you find out? appoint a person who has consented, how do you prepare that person or how do you go about asking a person if they're prepared to stand? I think there's something missing in this procedure to say uh, Susie Q or Joe Blow that's on the street, we may want that person to be uh, appointed. How do you go about uh, approaching that person in the first place? And I don't think there's anything here that clarifies that. These particular uh, statements are, taking, are taken directly from the Municipal Act. Uh, the only statement that we've added additionally to uh, Clause 34.4 and 34.5 is Item C, which indicates appoint the first non-elected candidate for the position. So it's a choice that council members have in the event of a vacancy. It's either filled by appointment, identify someone within the community. This particular section, I would think, is beneficial to the council in the year of an election when you were very close to a new election and the time frame would provide for someone who is 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 um, experienced as a member of council but has no desire to run in the next following election then you would probably approach that particular person and say would you mind completing the term there's only six months left within 90 days of an election you don't have to fill a vacancy. However, beyond 90 days, you must fill a vacancy. So it, if it happens close to that kind of time frame, it's an opportunity for council to choose that method to fill a vacancy. That is one way that they can do it. The next way is to um, uh, approve a bylaw that would send them to a by-election. And the third method could be to appoint one of the candidates that was uh, not elected in the last municipal election. All depends on the time frame when a vacancy would occur. It offers you the different opportunities. So a clarification of my question would be, council would present names and we would discuss those names prior to and then approach a person and then decide on the appointment after that period. Well, the process is a public process. Right. Um, how the members of council decide to do that that would be um, discussed by the mayor's office, I would suspect, with um, uh, members of council on how they want to proceed with that. Okay, so I'm clear. Thank you. Well, Councilor Grant, you're moving those changes? Yes, well, some were for clarification and some changes. Okay. So, uh, is there a seconder? Councilor Rebecca, any discussion or questions to our colleague, Councilor McDonald? Thank you. 